This bonnet is literally the heaviest I've ever lifted, but to get things out of the way quickly, this Wildtrek V6 is powered by, of course, a diesel V6 pushing out 184 kW and 600Nm of torque. Let's get to enjoying the car and see just how the new revised Ranger is like. Welcome to the exterior of this car. It is a redesign compared to the previous one. It is very beautiful. It attracts attention on the roads and it does look ragged even from the back it still maintains its beauty and that's what i love about this car it looks good inside it looks good outside but is it any practical are there press cards when it comes to the exterior of this car where things feel too soft not really even if i step on here it's plastic but it's still holding it moves along with the car even if i step here it's still holding it moves along with the car so that tells me that almost everything outside of here is very rigid let's open here now this is plastic but is that a huge bummer is that a huge tool breaker i don't know i don't lift or load a lot of things inside my backy i do find that it is quite slippery but you know there are anchor points inside where you can Put your stuff and make sure that they are tightened to the loading bed. If you want to open this, you just click there via the key. If you don't want to use the key, you can use that place there. And you can also do it from here with this button. So before the sun sets, let's settle the interior of this car. Is it any new? When you come in here, you are greeted by this huge infotainment screen and almost every feature or setting of this car is buried in there but it's very intuitive i'll show you much later and we also do get another screen there by the driver's display or digital cluster and you do see the littering wild track just to remind you what you're in and even the seats are covered in wild track and also the golden stitching or the yellow stitching by the seats and these are full leather and luckily this year or with this new model we do get electronically adjustable seats for both the passenger and the driver last year or the previous generation was only the driver who got the adjustable seats and then the passenger didn't so there is a feature here where you can do your bolstering you can increase that decrease that um just depends on your size and i do find that these seats will suit every body type whether you're big whether you're small whether you average everyone can fit in these seats so this bike is a five-seater. When you come into the back, the legroom is very decent. You also do get seat belts for almost every passenger that sits at the back. If you don't have a middle passenger, you can just slot that. You just have to pull heavy. And then you get the cup holders there for the back passengers. They can also raise these headrests whenever they wish to. But I prefer to have them down just to clear the view at the back, you know, with this wide screen there i want it to be as as clear as possible and they do also get electronic mirrors at the back and if they ever want to charge there is a 400 watt socket in there they can plug in their stuff or they uh, they can use a usb type c and type a and then they can also adjust the climate controls with these they don't have the option to set the temperatures or anything but that will do for now now this is the superpower side, the driver's side. What do you see from a point of view? First you have these drive modes that you can play around with. They do appear on your screen when you're busy flickering and you can also select the drivetrain mode. So currently we're in too high, can go to four high, four low, and we do not get the electronic handbrake, which is it still a handbrake if it's electronic. I don't know, it's electronic brake, I guess and you do get this button that can help you with your parking assist okay so it found a spot shift to n and then we hold this button for it to move and then i just have to release the brakes and it's gonna start doing its job when you click on that the settings are just going to appear here and you can choose whether you want to navigate to parking if you want anything else traction control is there auto stop and start um with this car it's not very bad i've been keeping it on the only thing that can annoy you is if you're busy 
you know, playing around with the pressure on the brakes, the system will switch off the engine. It will come on as you do that. So it's if you put your foot flat and you just leave it there at the same pressure, then it's not going to turn on and turn off while you're still stopped. Otherwise, the other button is just for you to see your off-roading tools. If you want to see all of those, the cameras, you can play around with them here um, and see every other setting that exists with this car. And with the controls on the screen, it's honestly same but old, same old, just with a new interface. Another cool feature that comes stock with this bike here are these auxiliary controls. You can wire them around the car and you can just flicker here. If you ever want to switch on lights around the bike here, the wires apparently are placed in different spots around the car and you can just switch them on by doing that there. It's very cool that you do get these stock from factory. And the killer note with this wild track. It's the Bang & Olufsen sound system. This thing sounds very good. It sounds very clear. Even at the maximum volume, your ears do not get irritated. You just hear some good music. You can still hear yourself. You can still function well. And the sound is not distorted at all when the music is playing. And so what about storage? Well, storage is still there. Much like the Everest, you get storage there. You get storage here. You open there. The storage there. You want cup holders, there's cup holders there, there's cup holders here. Where's this one? It's there. Neat design, it's even hidden, I can't find it that easy. But you do get everything. Oh, and there's a big storage here, which has my man bag. So a good question while you're in the interior can be whether you can or cannot reach this new infotainment system that they have. And of course you can. It's pretty responsive in way, even when you're driving and everything is within reach. There's the radio over there if I want to reach it. You can also control the volumes and stuff from here. And that so you don't scratch, always you have to be reaching way deep in there. There we go, auto stop start. So you don't always have to be deep in there, even the climate controls are still buttons, which I very much appreciate. Um, you know, I can switch off the aircon there, turn it on, my hazards are also there. So pretty much everything that I need um, is yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. As I'm driving on the highway, no, I'm very glad that the fuel consumption on open roads is good. At first, when I had just reset the meter and I drove plus minus 200 something kilometers, I managed to get 8.4. But immediately as I got into town, Hammond's crowd to be specific, ugh, um, yeah, things went, <laughs> things went south. So I managed to do 11.8 as I was getting into town and after that then that's where it became a thing of me getting um, your no currently I'm doing 12.4 um, that's because I've just been driving in and around town trying to get the feel of how this car is like on highway you can enjoy this car it does have lane keep assist which does allow me to take my hands off the steering wheel but it's not recommended that you do that so instead it will prompt you to still keep your hands on the steering wheel um, if you take it off for too much time but it does help you with navigating the highway and you just relaxing this adaptive cruise control which keeps you at a distance to the car in front of you and you can also set this by pressing the buttons on the steering wheel and when the car in front of you stops, decelerates, accelerates, this car does go with that car, um, but it stops at where you set it to. So, so, for example, my cruise control is currently set at 110, but because of this truck in front of me, it's slowing down to 70, which is the speed that this thing is traveling at. So I'm just gonna move and check how it quickly picks up speed. That's very quick. And when I get off, get off the accelerator, it's going to slow down to my 110 and just keep it there. Another thing that I just love about this car are the big side mirrors. These mirrors just allow me to see 
like four lanes out of my current lane either to the left or to the right i just love it like it's a 300 meters they do have some con to them being big as they are there is some field of vision that you cannot see through because they are big and they do um block some piece of the view but other than that they are very useful right like onto the m5 i know the pros outweigh the cons if we can so put it so even when i'm driving it through the town or like small urban areas the drive does still feel properly refined and i'm busy like going through a lot of circles turning here and there and it's not really annoying you know you would think a bikey is not really proper to drive around town it's only meant for long distance it's only meant for when you have a lot of stuff loaded in the car but it's actually not i can still drive this car it does get a bit tedious to keep turning the wheel because i think the full lock on this wheel is like three or four turns which does sound absolutely ridiculous but see like i'm turning now in a very small circle and then i can only, I only do like one turn and I'm done. And if you needed to be convinced about just how new the new one is to the old one they do seem to have almost the same length but everything is pretty much redesigned the side fenders are redesigned the doors are redesigned the wheels are new everything the side step is new there is a complete redesign and we can clearly see that it is a redesign but what are my final thoughts on it well i'm glad that they introduced the v6 it makes the ranger lineup not so dull with adding a new engine and not keeping like the old 3.2s the two liters with the whatever that they had that time i drove the previous storm track and the ranger raptor and i'm glad that we have this v6 engine it makes this wild track v6 so much better and it does complement the tech so well it complements the overall refined drive and everything else that makes this car good let's see over time just how they progress how these cars mature in our market but for now my final verdict is that you do need this car in your garage.